of St. Rose of Lima Parish. Today we will celebrate the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please stand if you are able and join us in our opening hymn. Number 848, gather us in. Number 848. Father to intercede for us. 
Lord in heaven. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord of Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High in Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you, through our Lord and Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste of salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Thank you be to God.
of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiful people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fresh fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Since we're celebrating on this weekend the World Marriage Day, I'd like to center a few words uh, this afternoon in the celebration of the Eucharist to the importance of marriage and the beauty of marriage as, as that gift that God uh, has given the church and the world. In my six years as a priest, I've had uh, the beautiful blessing to celebrate several uh, marriages, several weddings, uh, and also to help couples in their preparation for their wedding and their marriage. 
marriage. And when I work with these couples in those months uh, pr prior to their wedding day, I, I try to be very emphatical in the sense that as important as their wedding day is, they are to prepare themselves for a marriage that is a lifestyle for life. And not only for that celebration of the one day, the wedding day, that although it's, it's beautiful and wonderful, it just passes away as, you know, one more day, one celebration. But marriage remains as a lifelong journey. I'd like to invite you to think about the sacramental life of the church. In every sacrament we celebrate, God makes himself present. In every sacrament we celebrate, God makes his glory manifest. And in every single sacrament we have symbols and the signs that are visible and tangible that speak to us of God who is invisible, God who, who, who we are not able to touch uh, and to feel in the same way that we feel the physical things of this world. But every symbol, uh, every element of the sacrament speaks to us of a reality that is invisible. Let me give you a few examples, and this is not to say that uh, these are the only symbols uh, that we experience at, at every sacrament, but perhaps some of the central uh, symbols and signs that we experience in the celebration of sacraments. When we come to the celebration of baptism, uh, we don't see God there present in His glory. Uh, making of the person who is being baptized temple of his glory, there is no manifestation like the one when Jesus was, was baptized, the dove that came down from heaven. We don't hear the voice of God like when Jesus was baptized and God spoke and said, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. However, we see a sign that speak to us of all those realities, the invisible realities of God's grace, and it's the water. We see the water, and in the holy water, we are able to encounter the grace of God that is being present and manifesting uh, itself as a blessing that comes from heaven. When we celebrate the sacrament of confirmation, uh, same thing, we, we know that this is very important sacrament that seals our souls, that leaves a mark in our souls forever. But we don't see uh, uh, the presence of God uh, in this physical world, except the oil that is put on our foreheads. That oil speaks to us of God's grace. God who anoints us, God who chooses us, God who loves us, God who seals our souls. In the sacrament of reconciliation, uh, we also see in the person of the priest, and especially in the symbol of the cross at the time of the absolution, we see God's presence being there for us to restore us, to renew us, and to bring us back to communion with God and with the church. When we are sick and in need of the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, uh, again, we see in the oil that is used, the embrace of God who comes to us in our time of need, in our time of frailty. Every single sacrament gives us a visible sign that speaks to us of the invisible God. And so that's uh, the beautiful thing about the sacramental life of the church, that the invisible God makes himself present and manifests himself and his grace through these symbols that are so important. And in every sacrament there are other uh, uh, symbols and other elements that also speak of God's grace. But there is something very special and very clear about the sacrament of marriage. 
Sacrament of marriage is, is uh, in the group of the sacraments of service. There are two sacraments of, called sacraments of service. One is holy orders, uh, priests, deacons, priests, the bishops, and the other one is marriage. And what happens is that in this beautiful sacrament of marriage, the symbol that God uses, the sign that God uses very differently from the other sacraments is in fact not a thing. It's not water, it's not oil, it's not a candle with its light. In marriage, it is each person who is coming before the Lord to bless their love, the ones who become the sacramental sign. And this is very important uh, for all of us to understand because if the holy water is what speaks to us of God's grace in baptism, imagine the role of the spouse uh, of each of the spouses in marriage. In marriage, each spouse is called to be the image of God for the other. The visible image of God who is invisible for the other. And this is uh, what, why the sacrament of marriage is so beautiful and it's so important and that we are also called to pray for all those who are married because different also to other sacraments that might happen once in a lifetime, like baptism and confirmation, uh, the sacrament of, of marriage happens every day, every single day. It's not only on the day of the wedding that the sacrament takes place. It is every single day that the man is called to be the visible image of God for his wife, the wife is called to be the visible image of God for her husband. This is why the church has seen in marriage uh, uh, that image of, of Christ's love. Christ who has loved the church so much that he gave his life for the church. In that same way, a husband should love his wife and a wife should love her husband. It is so beautiful and so important and at the same time, it's such a challenge. Those of you who are married, you tell me how easy it is to be the image of Christ for your spouse. Certainly in our humanity, there are light, moments of great light in marriage, moments of darkness, moments of joy, uh, moments of sorrow. But in the midst of all of that, the married couple are called to be the image of Christ for each other. Now, those of us who are not married, whether because we choose a consecrated life in religious life or, or priesthood, or because uh, simply we're not called to be married, then we also have a task as members of the church to pray for our brothers and sisters who haven't been called to marriage, that they may be fruitful in their marriage. And so that, it, this is why it's so important that the Universal Church prays for all marriages this weekend, because it's not just important for those who are in the sacrament, it's important for the Universal Church, so that all of us pray together for a, a fruitful love in the sacrament of marriage. Now, it is important that on this weekend, uh, we also pray for all those who, having been married, have lost their spouse. It's so important to remind those of the members of the church who have entrusted the loved one to the mercy and care of God in heaven, to remember that the tides of love and friendship that lead us together throughout our lives do not unravel with death. What's beautiful about the sacrament of marriage is that love is put in God and God becomes the center of the marriage. Nothing can separate us from God. Nothing can separate us from that love that God has blessed. Human beings, we are a finite. And everything that we construct 
everything that we build uh, comes to an end and has an expiration date. But love doesn't. Love doesn't. If you have lost your spouse, know that your spouse lives in God and one day you shall see your spouse again. Now Jesus tells us that in heaven we won't live as, as, as if we were married uh, with, with our spouses, uh, but we definitely will live in love. And so uh, even though it is a mystery how everything will be when we get there, we know that the love that has been blessed on earth, being in God, is a love that is eternal. And nothing, nothing can break that bond of love. Today, it's also important that we offer our prayer for so many couples who love each other. So many couples who love each other who have promised to be faithful to each other and to work hard for each other. And who have decided to live together but have not still have not yet taken the step to have their, their, their relationship, their love, and even their civil marriage blessed in the church. It's an opportunity for us to pray for them that their love, which is beautiful, which is uh, which has the potential to bring to have so many blessings, is, is blessed in the church. Just as I was saying, you know, our, our human construct uh, can come to an end, but what has been blessed by God and love remains forever. So let us pray for all those couples who are living together that they may discover their vocation as the Lord calls them to bless their love. The best thing a couple can do is to have their love blessed because God is the source of love. And God has been the source of the love that profess for each other. Now, unfortunately, in, in the context of our society, uh, and in the context in which uh, there are so many bad stories about marriages, uh, many couples are discouraged to enter into marriage. This is why it's so important that we pray for them, and that praying for marriages uh, in the church that every marriage should be a, a, a mirror of the, of the love of God for us. And in that way, more couples be encouraged, seeing the good love that uh, marriages uh, have, that they, they, they take that step in their lives and their relationships. And as we continue this line of prayer, we cannot forget to pray for those being married for whatever reason or circumstances uh, decided at some point to not be married anymore. Pope Francis has dedicated many of his writings, his, pray, his prayers and, and his speeches uh, to talk about Catholics, good Catholics who for whatever reason find themselves being divorced. And to know that they also have a place in the church. That the fact that the relationship didn't work for whatever reason uh, is not a, a reason for them to think that they are not loved or that they're rejected by the church. God knows our circumstances and God knows us better than we know ourselves. And so for those people who, have, who find themselves in a, in a situation of, of divorce, know that God loves you, that the church loves you, and that there is a place for you in the church. We need to pray that our church be uh, embracing, inclusive, that our church be, has open arms so that no one feels a stranger and excluded in the church. Because it is the church of Jesus who never rejected anyone. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us continue uh, our sacrifice of the Eucharist, praying God who is unity in Himself. We believe in a triune God, God who is unity, God who is family, that He pour out His blessings upon all families. 
and upon all marriages, that every marriage be a visible sign of the invisible love that God has for his church and for us, that every spouse uh, make that commitment to be the face of God for his and her spouse, that God may bless the beautiful institution of marriage and that all marriages be fruitful in the eyes of God and for the good of the church. Amen. Let us confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, conscious not to the Father. Through him all things remain. For us men, for our salvation, he came, came down, down from heaven, heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our Christ sake, he was crucified by the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has loved us so much that he sent his son and gave his life for us. So trust in the love and mercy of God, let us lift up our prayers. For the church, that the power of Christ's resurrection may give us vision and perspective for our lives and the courage to live for God each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For discernment that we may see beyond the false answers of consumerism and prosperity and recognize that we only find the true fulfillment of our hungers and desires in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For protection and renewal of the earth, that God will inspire and guide us as we strive to be the good stewards of the air, land, and water, which God has given us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that God will guide the homeless to shelter, the hungry to food, and the abused to places of safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, particularly Elizabeth Blue, for whom this Mass is offered, may be that they be raised up on the last day to live forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, trust in love and mercy, all of these we ask through Christ. Amen. Amen. Our second collection today will be taken from the Catholic Home Missions. Uh, this collection supports uh, the work of diocese in the United States that are struggling with shortage of priests or after uh, 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 weather related uh, catastrophes. Thank you for your generosity. As the gifts are brought forward and the altar is prepared, please join us in our offertory hymn, number 592, We Are the Light of the World, number 592.
consistent that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for praise and glory of his name, for I've been the good of all the church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord it be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord in our hearts. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father of mercies and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became an neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as with our land we attain.
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Rose of Lima and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, as we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Glory to Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but to the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord will be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, Lord, that we may always long for the food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, please be seated for just two more minutes. Uh, we have a new ministry uh, starting at St. Rose of Lima, beautiful ministry of service. So I invite Lisa Gillingham, who will be uh, telling us a little bit about this great new ministry in our parish. Thank you, Father. My name is Lisa Gillingham. Thank you all, and especially to Father Juan, for giving me the opportunity to speak with you tonight. I promise that I will be brief. Julie Brannon and I have been working to establish a meal ministry to offer assistance to parishioners and neighbors in times of need. I am standing in front of you tonight to share a little information about the program to ask for your support and your prayers to invite you and to invite you to take advantage of it if it would be helpful to you at this time or any time in the future. St. Rose is launching this program to assist people with short-term meal support during times of increased stress due to major illness or crisis. We aim to offer up to two meals per week for up to three weeks in order to alleviate some small part of the burden to them and their families. Additionally, we will gladly coordinate a single meal delivery after the birth or adoption of a child. We are recruiting volunteers to assist in preparing or providing meals. And for those of you who might think that you not have the culinary muscle or expertise for this endeavor, we say to you, this is not a gourmet club. We are not looking for Julia Child or the Barefoot Contessa or Bobby Flay. We are asking for help from good people who make simple meals and have had their own fair share of experience burning a dinner or two. We also welcome those of you who like to dial takeout. <laughs> there is no long-term commitment for this work. If you volunteer to prepare meals, you will have access to an online sign-up program where you can commit to a meal as little or as often as you can. We were inspired to start this ministry because this is a church family, and families take care of one another. This project will be powered on love. We celebrate each other's successes, we share our joys and our sorrows, and we reach out when we think we might be able to help. And I think that God continues to teach this church family the same valuable lesson over and over again, that when we lift ourselves up to help others, God will lift us up as well. You can find more information about the meal ministry in the bulletin, and I will be in the gathering space uh, after Masses to answer questions. And because none of us live by bread alone, I would like to seize the moment to remind everyone that St. Rose will be continuing its faith sharing groups during Lent this year. The Lenten season is right around the corner and we encourage you to consider how a faith sharing group might live, fit into your life in the upcoming weeks, especially if you have not participated before. If you have your doubts, perhaps you will allow, allow me to share what I have observed. Faith sharing is not an activity that requires you to bear your soul. It is an activity that honors your privacy and respects your boundaries. Faith sharing is not catechism. It is an opportunity to spend some time with other people who care about faith, but do not have it all figured out. Faith sharing is not a program. Faith sharing is a process, one that you and your group will drive together. And perhaps most of all, I have learned that faith sharing is an activity that supports my personal journey in ways that others don't always know about. It is an avenue for making friends, and it usually 
is the effort that transforms my own Easter experience. And can I just say, this is way better than giving up chocolate. <laughs> but I do respect those of you who make that sacrifice, you are a better person than I am. There are sign-up sheets for face sharing in the gathering space, and you will find that there are opportunities for both uh, in-person and virtual meetings, if you're interested. So there you have it. Through the meal industry and faith sharing, St. Rose is offering you food for the body and the soul. I sincerely hope that you will join us. Thank you. Lisa, you're hired for parish announcements. We have, as Lisa said, the face sharing, the sign-up sheets are in one of the tables in the gathering space uh, with the different kinds uh, of opportunities. And also next to it, we have another table with another sign-up sheet as we also will be having a, a uh, let me just, I want to come as prepared as Lisa, a spiritual reading group, spiritual reading group that will be meeting on Tuesdays in the afternoon and also uh, in the evening. And this group is going to be meditating on the book, The Return of the Prodigal Son. So we have, uh, these are, are some of the upcoming activities that will help us to grow in faith uh, during the Lenten season. And, and we want to encourage you and challenge you to be part uh, of this great opportunity. I'd like to also let you know that as we pray for for all married couples, let us keep in our prayers most in the process of getting married uh, and with great joy I share with you that we have seven couples in preparation here at St. Rose of Lima uh, that will be getting married in the coming months. So please uh, keep them in, in your prayers and, and, and let us pray that, they, that they, their love be truly blessed. Uh, as they celebrate their wedding day, they get ready for their, their marriage. Now let us keep praying for vocations. We need, the same way we have seven couples for vocations, for marriage, it will be great Sunday to say we have seven seminarians or more coming from St. Rose of Lima uh, for, for priesthood or for religious life, uh, men and women. Let us stand for the blessing. The Lord will be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory and peace. Glorify the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful evening. Love you all. As we go forth to love and serve the Lord, please join in our closing hymn, number 736, The Kingdom of God, number 736.